everybody and welcome to the Film Review Central channel with me, Kieran Grinners. I hope that you're all well. Before we get into any of this, I just want to say a massive Happy New Year to every person that is watching this video right now. Thank you so much for all the incredible support over the last 12 months in 2023. Um, I started off this channel in the January and it's been a fantastic year. It's been really, really awesome to you know, meet a lot of people within the community to really get a fantastic reception from you guys about the videos. And this year's going to be good. There's going to be so much uh, new content that's going to be coming on the channel. Uh, I'll get into that in a later date, but I'm just trying to sort of sort some stuff out for you guys. But the primary thing I want to focus on today is the movies that are coming out in 2024, because here is my top 10 most anticipated movies of 2024. At the end of this list, I just want to mention a few things. These are 10 films that I'm aware of in January 2024. I'm not saying that these are going to be the top 10 12 months um, down the line. That's not going to be the situation. There are going to be a, move, a few movies here that might drop off, films that I don't like, films that I find disappointing. But... At this current moment in time, these are the films that I'm going to be there, first in the line, opening day, ready to watch, because I'm just generally looking forward to them, whether they're sequels, whether they're the trailers exciting me, the cast involved. There's a lot of different things and aspects of these movies that I would enjoy and looking forward to. I always pride myself in finding these little gems, films that I have no idea about, that's going to end up in my top 10. For example, The Holdovers from last year. Did not think that was going to be in my top 10. Didn't even know what the film was about but it was in my top 10 so um, not saying that these movies I wish that they're not going to be in there but just to let you know is that if I miss any of these out when I go really you're looking forward to that one it's just how I feel at this current moment in time one final thing before we get started please go in the comment section below and let me know on your most anticipated movie of 2024 it could be one of mine it could be one that just nearly got to my list there's a lot of really decent ones coming out in the year of 2024. So, let's get started. Number one. Madam Web comes out on the 14th of Feb, and for me, I'm always really intrigued in these sort of individual Spider-Man adventures. I like the two Venom movies, but they're not the best, they're not the greatest within the genre, but I enjoy them and I like them. And the trailer, whilst it gave us a lot, it gave us far too much than what we need. I think it gave us a good, solid story, very original as well. I think Dakota Johnson's a really great cast, cast in, in the main role. And I think there's just going to be some really cool um, action sequences that we've seen from the trailer. Sort of using this idea of knowing the future and, and having this idea and could make some really cool anticipated moments. So for me, there's a lot of elements of this film that I'm really, really enjoying. Number two. Dune Part 2 comes out on the 1st of March and I cannot wait for this film. It should have come out in December of 2023, but it got delayed. It's going to be most definitely worth the wait. An amazing cast um, in this movie. New additions like Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, um, add to a really, really great impressive cast. The visionary idea of this movie. Denise Villeneuve returns as well in the director's chair. Absolutely loved the first Dune movie, loved his other stuff including Arrival and Blade Runner 2049, such a visionary director. And for me, this is Game of Thrones within a sci-fi element, and all of them elements really make for a very exciting movie. So for me, Doom Part 2 is definitely going to be up there as an early Oscar contender for even next year. It's just missed out on potential nominations for this year, but I'm sure it's going to be picking up some Oscar nominees in 12 months. Number 3. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire comes out on the 29th of March and did not like the female version of Ghostbusters but I really enjoyed Afterlife. It really brought the heart and the emotion back from the original movie and Frozen Empire mixes in the emotional side with the comedians and also just so much fun and real great enjoyment. Really enjoyed the first trailer. I thought it gave us that sort of idea of real horror within this as well and being sort of frozen i think that's a really creative idea some really great cast, cast members coming back and it'll be a shame but because i do think that this might be the final ghostbusters movie but i think the last two in afterlife and this one fingers crossed will give this franchise very much justice 
Number four. Furiosa is the first of two movies on my top 10 most anticipated list of this year. Coming out on the 24th of May, really enjoyed Mad Max Fury Road. What a simple but yet creative and effective movie. And for me, Furiosa, what it does so brilliantly is give us the down, the dirty and the almost sort of spectacle uh, of the Mad Max world. Mixing with Chris Hemsworth, who looks so unrecognisable. It's almost like they're trying to make him look very ugly, which you can't do, to be fair. He is a very good-looking man. But very much a very creative and sort of idea of a backstory. Andy Taylor-Joy, I've really enjoyed her movies up until this point, with one of my favourite movies of hers being The Menu. So I think this sort of brutal, hard-hitting character, I definitely think will work, and it's such great casting. Number five. But the second movie coming out on the 24th of May is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I think the Andy Serkis trilogy is one of the most underrated tr movie trilogies of recent time. Absolutely loved all three of them movies. And coming back in with this one, you're going to get a lot more of the spectacle, a lot more of the ideas. Um, really great casting as well. And I just think expanding this world, putting them in new environment, can really, really mix with the story. Mix up with some... Um, really great cast for the human side as well, including um, uh, one of the actresses who's in The Witcher, which I'm a, I'm a massive fan of that show. So all of these elements will be really great. To just see this in the cinema will be absolutely awesome. Number six. Kicking us off in the uh, summertime is A Quiet Place Day One. Putting a horror movie in the summer. It doesn't matter anymore, does it? I really enjoyed the last two A Quiet Place movies. So creative and different within the horror genre. Um, John Krasinski is back as well in the creative chain. He has such a great eye for these incredible horror movies. Mixing a really creative story. I cannot wait to see a trailer. Fingers crossed it comes in the next few weeks. Because I just think what this movie does so brilliantly is captivate us within a world and all these very scary possibilities, particularly in that first one when Emily Blunt had to give birth quiet. I don't even want to know um, what that could potentially have been like in real life. So, so many great elements, cannot wait for this one. Number seven. About a month later, we have Deadpool 3. I mean, I just have to say that and we can get on to the next movie, can't we? Ryan Reynolds is back, Hugh Jackman is back, and there's been so many rumours about who might turn up as well. It's Deadpool in the MCU. I think that's all gave you all the factors to get you in there um, over the day. But if you are going to go in the same cinema as me for this movie, you might have to take one step back because I absolutely cannot wait for this movie. If you had to give one movie that would be at the top, because I'm just doing these in release order, Deadpool 3 is easily number one. Please do not mess this up, Disney. Number eight. This might be a bit of an, an unpopular opinion, but I think Transformers 1 could actually be pretty good. It's coming out of September time, so you're missing out that big summer. I, I actually enjoyed Transformers Rise of the Beast a lot more than other people, and Bumblebee I thought was a really great um, Transformers movie. But I do think without Michael Bay, you've got some really great creative stories using the animated format, which is so popular within the 90s and the TV shows um, as well. And it's also got a great casting as well. It's got Scarlett Johansson, Chris Hemsworth, Willem Dafoe. So you've got a really impressive cast list mixed up with sort of potential to use the animated format really well. I mean, it's more anticipating in terms of intriguement rather than general excitement because it could really drop the ball. But I'm looking forward to this. I think it's going to be really interesting. Number nine. Our penultimate movie on the top ten is Joker Fully Edu. I completely said that wrong. I understand I cannot speak French. Uh, but Joker 2 is easily one of my favourite comic book movies of all time. I absolutely love this film. And, and I do think whilst all the writing on the wall is that this could be a massive misfire. This is too weird. you got Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. I don't mind. I really don't mind because I really like the world that Todd Phillips created in the first Joker. Mixed with Joaquin Phoenix who is one of the best actors of our generation. I do think that this has enough to get me excited, regardless of all these wacky and uh, weird storylines. But the Joker is wacky and weird, so it kind of goes hand in hand. Number 10. But the last movie is Gladiator 2. This is a, a really sort of poignant film because this is one of my dad's favourite movies. And every year, towards the end of the year, we do decide to go to the cinema 
and uh, and watch a movie that is really really you know we appreciate it's been the star wars movies ever since they've done them like with disney we went to go and watch that watch no time to die we're both big bond fans and then last year we went to go and watch napoleon um as well because he was really intrigued in that there's always a movie which i kind of go dad which one do you want to watch and put the question to him this is easily going to be the movie that we go and watch um such a fantastic cast denzel washington um, is in there, Joaquin Phoenix should be coming back for this one, Russell Crowe should be back as well. I think Gladiator is one of the best movies um, of all time, it's most definitely within a lot of people's lists and I just cannot wait to see a gritty, dark story that lives up to the original, please, fingers crossed, we get that as well. So that is it for my 10 most anticipated movies of 2024. What are your most anticipated movies? I would love to know. And please like and subscribe to the channel um, because this year we've got so many really great creative projects coming forward. I will be revealing them in the next few weeks once I get all of the situation sorted. So fingers crossed we can get a really decent film. And year for the channel. Thank you very much. I've had to make the conversation about film and TV sound a little bit more interesting. See you in a bit.